as you're growing your brand, whether you're a small business or a big corporation, it's a good idea to have a full brand board so that you and anyone that works for you can reference it at any time. You might have also heard this called a branding guide or a style guide, and it breaks down the components of your logo, colors, typography, and the general aesthetic of your brand. So today we're gonna show you how to make your own brand board and we're gonna do it using a brand that we came up with a couple weeks ago called Mary Vu, which is an ethical home goods brand that we design in a more modern floral way. And you can check out that logo design process by clicking this card right here. And by the way, you can sign up to use Kittle for free using the link down in the description. And then you can follow along with this video. So let's get started, but do me a quick favor first and hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any of the upcoming tutorials, tips, and interviews that we post here on the channel. All right, let's dive in. All right, before I get into designing the brand board, I want to explain why it's important because a brand board is the roadmap for your brand. So if you're hiring a web designer or a graphic designer or need to send something to your printer, this is the roadmaps for how they're supposed to use different elements in your brand. So for example, here at the top, we have our logos and our submarks. So here we have our primary logo. That of course is going to be the main logo that you're gonna see front and center on most of your items or your brand. Now we also have submarks here that are smaller versions and they work really well for maybe a different packaging design or maybe a stamp or a seal or something like that. We always wanna have different lockups of the logo to use in different scenarios because sometimes that giant part is not going to work on everything. Then we have colors and it's always really important to make sure you designate what the colors are for. So here with this darker color, we see that it's for typography and illustrations. And then moving over here into the right, we have this lighter color for backgrounds and that just tells the person what they're supposed to do with each color. So example here, we have this lighter pink beige color, which is like the watercolor stain for illustrations. And then we have buttons as this lighter mustard yellow color. And then over on the far right, we have this copper tone for typographic highlights, things that you wanna highlight, for example. Now we also have fonts, and of course we wanna express what fonts we're using. And we also wanna show them with real life examples. So here we have a main heading. We have that Bistro Signature script font on the left, but I'm showing you over here on the right, a main heading would be on sale. So we always wanna provide the person with an example of how to use the font. And by the way, you wanna use the fonts in your brand guide to make sure everything is on brand. So use the same fonts that you're gonna be using in your style guide. So here's an example of a subheading, our fall favorites, maybe this is for an ad or something like that, where you wanna pair it with the main heading. And then we have body copy, again, maybe something for an ad or for your website. Moving down, we have a photography mood board, and you just wanna provide different examples of photography that blends well with your brand. So we're using really muted tones, beiges, earthy tones, things that work really well with this pink watercolor stain I've got here on the top left and the bottom right, because I wanna show the person how all of these colors and these elements and these photographic elements are working together. Moving down, we also have design elements, and this tells the person what kind of style they need to be using, what kind of elements they need to be using. So we have florals, we have scribbles, we have this watercolor stain, we have this paint mark, and then we have backgrounds like wood and beige, and that way these people know who you're hiring, what to do with your brand elements. And then we have examples of all of that together. So our fonts, our elements, and our photography are here, for example, in social media posts, or maybe it's for a sale or an ad or something like that. So I provide examples here at the bottom as well as some icons for social media. Hey, if you're enjoying this brand board tutorial, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and that red subscribe button. Then let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite brand is there a brand that you just resonate with that you love a lot and i'm talking it could be anything from coca-cola to disney so let me know down in the comments and let's start the conversation all right let's get back to the tutorial now let's get started with our brand board so we're going to use the poster big setting now we can always make it bigger here with the h we can always make the height setting bigger if we need to but we're gonna get started with this one right here and that's totally fine. I think we're gonna go as far as we need to before we need to expand the board. And so what I'm gonna show you is how to set this up with a grid. So if I turn the grid on, we want to make sure that everything is nice and lined up because we want the brand board, again, it's an extension of your brand. We want it to 
to be nice. So if we use the grid, we can use these boxes to make sure everything is equal widths apart. And then we keep copying and pasting it on down to make sure everything is where it needs to be. So we're gonna have our primary and our sub marks here. And I'm just gonna copy in, we've already made this in a previous video, which you can check out in the card up above. But you can also upload an image. Let's say you didn't make it in Kittle, or if you exported it or something, you can add it in. Now this one has a background, so you might wanna use an SVG or something without a background, but that's an option for you. So once you have your logo marks in there, we also want to provide colors, which you saw over in the main part at the beginning of the video. So we're gonna add circles to do this. You can easily duplicate with Alt, Option, and Drag, or with Command C and Command V. And once we have our circles here, there's a really cool site called Coolers, where you can find color palettes, which is pretty, pretty cool. So if we go down to this button and hit Start the Generator, it's gonna give us different color palette options. Now we can hit this random button down here and it's gonna give us just different colors that we may wanna use, we may not. Again, it's kind of totally random. You haven't given it any information, but if we go over here to image, you can upload an image, which is really cool, or you can go over to stock and you can find an image that you might like to use and draw some colors from it. So once we find an image that we wanna use, I like this mountain scheme here, we can select a color and move it around to find a palette. So you're creating a palette from this image, which is a cool idea. Again, if you've had images from your mood board, you can do that and boom, you have a color palette, which is really cool. So then we can hit next and we can open it in the generator and then we have all of our codes there. So once we have all of those codes, and again, I know these colors are different from what I just showed you, it was just an example. Now we can go over to the object color, we can click the hex code here, and then we're gonna provide that down below because the person's probably not viewing this in Kittle, but they need to know it, especially if it's a printer, they need to know the exact hex code. Now you can also get the RGB colors here if they need them, you can do that as well. And then as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you wanna have an example of what the color is for. So here I'm gonna double click in and I'm gonna type typography and illustrations because that's what this darker color here is for. So once you have all your colors and the designations, we're moving on to fonts. And as you saw in the beginning and as I expressed already, you can go through different kinds of fonts here and there are so many. A lot of these are free to use and you can also purchase some of them as well. You can always search them or you can find some of the other vintage ones on heritage type. I'm using ones that are specifically here in Kittle already. But another cool thing that you can do is you can go up here in the top right and you can upload your own fonts. So once you choose your fonts, you can open up your own, upload them, and boom, you can build your style guide that way. And then you can just provide the fonts to whoever you need to provide them to. We're gonna time lapse through this part just so you can see how I did it. I already saved things like the full alphabet, which is important for people to see. Again, they need to see exactly how you are providing the font and what they need to do with it. So the way to do that is to duplicate this and we're going to make headings, which you already saw in the beginning. So feel free to skip ahead if you're looking for a different part of how to make your brand board here. So moving on, you can even look for photos here in Kittle. You don't even have to leave. You can go to the photo here and then you can go up here into the search bar and you can type some different keywords to get photos that are going to fit your mood they're going to fit your brand so we'll type in linen here hit enter and then we can choose one that best fits our brand so this one for example is really nice and we can just go through and pick different elements different photographs that fit our brand so you can go over here you can type different keywords in there and go through this and find images that fit your brand without ever even leaving Kittle. Now, of course, you can upload your own. Maybe you found some on Pinterest or something. PNGs and JPEGs are totally easy to upload as well. Now, we have tons of design elements already here in Kittle. So you can see these illustrations here. If I go over to the elements panel, we have so many illustrations that you can go through and use for creating your design elements portion of your brand board. We also have abstract elements here, which is where we found our scribbles, and it's where we're gonna add our watercolor here. So we like this watercolor stain. I wanna drag this over and I'm gonna make it bigger and then boom, that's the shape that we wanna use as maybe a background or something. Of course, we can lower our opacity and things like that and it's just that simple. You can find elements in Kittle. You don't even have to go anywhere else. 
Now let's say you want to use this with a different program. That's totally fine. I've opened a new project and I have a bunch of these watercolor stains that maybe I want to use in a different program. I can just download an SVG, which is available in the Pro and the Expert plan. You can, you can export a PNG or, S, or JPEG if you need to. I can delete these though and I can just do one. Maybe you don't want all of those, you just want one. And I can also download that as an SVG, no problem. Now here we are at the bottom, and again, I already explained this at the beginning of the video, but we just have examples of everything combined. So we have our typography, we have our elements, and we have our photography all working together as examples so that whoever you send this to has something to go off. So here's one I made in Kittle. I'm using the same fonts. I've downloaded it as a PNG, a JPEG. This is an ad, for example. And then I've uploaded it over here, and I've added it to the brand board, and it's just that simple. And I've done it a couple different times and then we have our icons over here on the right and you can find these icons on websites like icon finder they're free to use and they're super easy they're svgs as well which is really cool so once you go to a site and again you can search for you know free social media icon something like that once you've uploaded it i can add it in here i can make it the correct size and because it's an svg I can go over here to object color, I can click the right color, and then it is ready to go, and it's just that simple. Well, that's all for this video, but be sure to check out these other videos I have here linked on my right, and if you're really into modern strategies, I have a full playlist. You can click right here above my head, and it'll take you to a playlist of videos I know you're going to enjoy.